have a problem today that involves combustion. And it's a stoichiometry problem. It, it follows the model of grams of substance going to moles of substance. Go from grams, moles, through the stoichiometry, the moles of another substance, and then back to grams. This is the typical format of most of these types of problems. Most, almost all stoichiometry problems involve some piece of this uh, solving scheme, or sometimes the whole thing. Sometimes you do it backwards, sometimes you do it forwards, sometimes you start here and go this way, sometimes you start here and go that, that way. All of them are, uh, have a similar um, setup. By the way, when you go from mole grams to moles, you're going to uh, divide by molar mass, and if you want to go from moles to grams, you'll multiply by molar mass. Same thing on the other side. So here's our problem. Candles are made of wax with the chemical name, they're made of a wax with the chemical name triacontane, C30H62. Triacontane, we'll assume, has a density of around 0.77 grams per centimeter cubed. I wasn't able to actually look up the exact density of triacontane, but it's not that important for the sake of our problem. We're going to, uh, we're going to solve it. Most candles, uh, most waxes and uh, petroleum products are in that area of density, around 0.7. So the first question, part of the question is to balance the combustion of triacontane. Uh, so we do that by realizing that every combustion reaction, if it's 100% combustion, if it's a complete combustion, is going to have a fuel and it's going to have oxygen as the, to support the combustion. And it's going to produce two things, carbon dioxide and water as products. Combustion equations are very easy to balance. You, you balance them alphabetically. Always start by balancing carbon, then hydrogen, and finally oxygen. It always works without fail. If it's a complete combustion equation, you can balance it following CHO as the, as the balancing scheme. So we start by looking at carbon. C30H62, there are 30 carbons on the left of this equation, 30 carbons have to appear on the right side of the equation. Those 30 carbons are going to be provided by, uh, by CO2. I'm going to erase these numbers because we came to them through a process of uh, reasoning. So we have 30 carbon atoms that have to be, uh, appear on the right hand side. So that's why we're going to put 30 CO2. I don't have to be concerned about anything else in the ad equation because the only source of carbon on the right hand side of the equation is the CO2. H2O has no carbon, so we can't balance carbon by putting any numbers in front of CO2. So 30 CO2s will balance the 30 carbons in triacontane uh, when it combusts. <coughs> triacontane also has 62 hydrogens. The only source of hydrogen on the, uh, hydrogen on the right side of the equation is water. So we're going to balance that by putting a 31 in front of H2O. Now we can concern ourselves with balancing the oxygens in the equation. But we start from the right-hand side. There are 30 times 2 oxygens here and 31 oxygens there. So for a total of 60 plus 31, 91 oxygens. But because oxygen come in pairs, it's a diatomic element, we're going to write the number 91 over 2. And that will take care of how many oxygens are on both sides of the equation. If you're bothered by fractions, you can double everything. And this becomes 2, this becomes 91, this becomes 60, and this becomes 62. Now the equation is still balanced, and it's balanced all with whole numbers. The next step of solving our problem is how much um, oxygen would a candle with 500 centimeters cube volume use up? Well, we know from our grade 10 curriculum that density is equal to mass over volume. Now you might not be uh, familiar with the symbol. This is the Greek letter rho. This is the actual letter that they use to symbolize density in science. It looks like a P with a long stem. So it's what they called rho. It's pronounced rho and it's spelled R-H-O. That is the letter used for representing density. So density is equal to mass over volume. Mass is usually stated in grams. Volume is usually stated in milliliters. We want to solve for the mass of the candle to find out how many moles of it we have, or how many moles of triacontane we have. So we're going to rearrange the equation to solve for m. We get density times volume is equal to mass. We enter the two numbers that we know, 0.77 grams per centimeter cubed, 
times 500 centimeters cubed centimeters cubed cancel and it gives us a mass of 385 grams for our candle. So we have 385 grams of triacontane. That's the fuel. 385 grams divided by the molar mass of triacontane, 30 times the mass of carbon, 62 times the mass of hydrogen, tells us that we have 0.91 moles of triacontane. So we're at this point in the problem. We have the number of moles now. The next step is to find out how many moles of CO2 are going to produce. And we have to go through the stoichiometry of the reaction. So that involves putting a conversion factor to tell us how many moles of CO2 are going to be produced for X moles of tricontane being consumed. That, tri that stoichiometry is obtained from the balanced equation. It's 60 to 2. For every two molecules of tricontane burned, 60 molecules of CO2 appear. For every two moles of tricontane burned, 60 moles of CO2 appear. So we're going to put 2 on the bottom because we want to cancel moles of triacontane. 60 moles of CO2 appear for every 2 moles of triacontane burned. We can cancel these two uh, quantities. And 60 over 2 is the same as 30. So we're multiplying this number by 30. 30 times 0.9 gives us 27. <coughs> so we have 27 moles of CO2 appearing. And the last step is to convert moles of CO2 into grams of CO2. The last step is to go through here. And we're going to multiply CO2 by the molar mass of CO2, which is given by the mass of carbon plus 2 times the mass of oxygen. This number times this number gives us this number, which is equal to, we're only allowed two significant figures because I only reported these numbers to two significant figures. Oh, this one is three, but this is our limiting figure. So we can only report our answer to two significant figures, 1.2 times 10 to the 3 grams of CO2, which incidentally is 1.2 kilograms. So 1.2 kilograms of CO2 is produced.